Hi guys, today I want to talk about which phone, which Android phone is best for rooting in custom ROMs. Let's go and take a look. Hi guys, so there's a lot of different phones out there today. There's Samsung, there's LG, there's OnePlus, there's Pixel, um, a ton of different phones. But which phone is the easiest to root? Um, so let's cover that. So the first easiest phone to root are basically the unlocked versions of OnePlus. This is OnePlus 8 Pro, uh, OnePlus 6. All the OnePluses are literally identical to Pixel. Um, Pixel is also easy. P Pixel, Google Pixel is the original uh, Google phone. Um, these are the easiest, the Pixel phones and the unlock OnePlus, also the unlock version. Now, if you grab the T-Mobile version of OnePlus um, or the Verizon, uh, you will have to actually get unlocking code while unlocking the bootloader, which gives you another step. And there's times where T-Mobile might not give you the unlock code. So if you're going to buy a OnePlus device, make sure to buy the unlock version. All right, the unlock version also comes with dual SIM and you can, it's fully compatible with T-Mobile and Verizon. So it's pretty much the same phone, uh, but with unlock SIM and unlock bootloader. Now, uh, if you're gonna get the, also the Pixel, exact same thing. Don't grab the Verizon models. The bootloader is locked and you'll be stuck with no root. So if you wanna get root, I would, I would say the best are OnePlus and the Pixel devices. Um, in terms of also popularity, that a lot of developers are able to buy these phones and also develop ROMs. Now, another good thing with Pixel phones and uh, OnePlus, these two are, especially the unlock version, uh, for the OnePlus, it's ever since OnePlus 6, uh, I think, was it 6 or uh, the 6T and up. Uh, OnePlus now supports all 4G LTE bands uh, for Verizon and T-Mobile, now 5G with the 5G model. Um, also, Pixels have always been all carrier phones. You could also use it on uh, T-Mobile and Verizon. All right, AT&T, and T-Mobile, um, so basically they support the extra uh, bands from T-Mobile. Basically, these two phones can support all the networks, at and T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon. It's an all-carrier phone. That's another reason to buy these phones. Now, let's talk about uh, something like a Xiaomi. I like Xiaomi too, but I've gotten away from Xiaomi. Um, the only thing with Xiaomi is they've changed their unlocking uh, bootloader method, which means after you buy the phone, you have to wait 30 days to 45 days, which is a drag because um, usually unlocking the bootloader involves erasing everything off your phone. All right, which means if I use the phone for 30 days, 45 days, and then I have to unlock the bootloader, it means I have to get rid of everything and I have to start over. So that's one thing that's sort of holding back Xiaomi. All right, I like Xiaomi phones, but I'm sort of getting away from that particular thing. And their unlocking bootloader is a little bit more complicated using their own tools. So I don't actually really like it that much. So that's why this one does not <laughs> um, fit the criteria for the easiest to root. So easiest to root, but, but definitely these two. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, LG phones. Um, so all the US models of LG phones have locked bootloader um, if you want to root you have to grab the European version now I do believe they are still the European version supports actually the US the only the US version supports the extra bands of T-Mobile and also Verizon so if you get the US model uh, unlocked version of LG phones these days like the LG since LG I don't know the last few years uh, any of the LG G60, 7G, 8, um, all the V60, V50, I think up to V40. Uh, all of those unlock versions support Verizon, CDMA, um, and also T-Mobile extra bands. Now, the problem is the US uh, versions, they don't support unlock bootloader. Um, there are ways, sometimes people figure out a way, uh, but usually you're very pretty much stuck or you're gonna have to wait for this super complicated method on how to root your LG US device. Now you can get the European version, 
but those only support GSM, which means you can only use it on AT&T and um, uh, T-Mobile, right? Um, so those are sort of advantage. Oh, I forgot about Sprint also. I meant Sprint also. Um, you can with the uh, unlock versions. Now, um, same thing with same thing with Samsung phones. Samsung phones have lock bootloaders for all their U.S. models. If your model ends in U, um, you're screwed. Like the S20 Ultra I got here ends in U. You cannot root it. It has lock bootloader. There's simply no way around it. Um, Last few years has been pretty much locked. The only way you can get root is by getting its international Exynos model, uh, which does not support Sprint or Verizon, but it does support AT&T and T-Mobile, uh, but it doesn't support the extra bands like 600 megahertz on T-Mobile. All right, so you don't get the full support. Um, so Samsung's hard to root, not really. Samsung's LG's not really hard to root, more like impossible to root if you have the US versions. All right, and another thing is that because of that, a lot of, you know, ROM developers are actually based in the US. So they tend to buy uh, phones that are compatible with US bands. Now that Sam, you know, last few years, Samsung and LG uh, have not been able to root because of the lock bootloader. A lot of ROM developers uh, have moved on to you know, better, easier to root phones such as the OnePlus and the Pixel. All right, bottom line, the Pixels are great. Even if you're buying used phone, they're really easy to root. Um, the best, the absolute best Android phone to uh, root and install custom ROMs that's completely unbreakable uh, is the OnePlus phones. Now, one of the best things about OnePlus is as you see in my recent videos, that you can actually do a OTA update, like you can update the firmware without rebooting. So when you download a firmware uh, update on the OnePlus devices, um, basically you could go into a system, system updates, and when you hit download and update, it will actually download the firmware and update without actually rebooting. All right, and also you can go ahead and install different firmwares uh, from the uh, OS. You don't have to reboot into ADB or anything like that. I can literally restore this phone uh, or, or update it to the new firmware within the OS, right? It's really built for rooting and custom ROMs. So this is probably the best phone for rooting and custom ROMs. And this phone was born out of custom ROMs. The first one plus one uh, was actually called the Sionegen. Sion. Sion Legend. Sorry, I haven't said that for a while. Anyway, the CM ROM, CM phone. This was the Sion Legend uh, mod phone. So that's why this is the best. Uh, if you want the easiest to root, uh, a lot of ROM support, and very fast phone, um, I would definitely go with the OnePlus or the Pixel phones. Now, now this is even easier to use than Pixel. Um, you can actually brick the OnePlus devices. Now, the greatest thing about OnePlus devices, all the OnePlus devices, uh, they OnePlus provides you with uh, unbricking tool at the low chip uh, Qualcomm level, which means if you completely brick it, like there's times where my phone's just you know just the LED comes on, then you can simply go ahead and download the Qualcomm unbricking tool. And it will literally reset it just like uh, it's the same software they use at the factory. So these phones are just really made to mod custom ROMs. That was their initial, when OnePlus One came out many years ago, um, that was their initial goal. And I've been using it since OnePlus One, obviously. Um, so definitely, if you want the best, OnePlus um, or the Pixel. Pixels are also good. Pixels never... I've never bricked a Pixel before. Uh, Google builds Android phones. So whatever they make, it's really, really flawless. So definitely um, try the Pixels or the OnePlus. And also I have an announcement is that I'm no longer supporting uh, Samsung phones and um, other phones. I'm only gonna focus on Pixel and OnePlus. So if you guys wanna see my future tutorials, 
I mean, I'll, I still have a bunch of universal tutorials for Samsung and stuff. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna focus on. Just because the problem with Samsung phones is that I make a, tuto uh, I make a very good tutorial guide. I spend, you know, a full day making it. And it takes all the energy out of me to make a rooting video or whatever video. And then Samsung comes out with a new update the ne the month after that blocks my root tutorial. So now people think my tutorial doesn't work. I'm not gonna go there and spend a whole day to remake the tutorial, all right? Um, so that's another reason I don't wanna deal with it. It's just a big headache. I don't wanna make a, you know, 10 different tutorials every time Samsung wants to change something. The good thing with OnePlus, I made a root tutorial for, you know, um, OnePlus, and it still works from like OnePlus 1 to OnePlus 5. The root method never changes. Recently, it has changed with Android 10, but it does not, you know, the, the company doesn't actively try to block routers, whereas Samsung really actively try to block routers. Um, I don't know why they do that. And I just feel like, you know, the root community actually brought up Samsung back in the day. Um, you guys remember it was really, you know, everybody was rooting with the Galaxy S2. That was all it's about. And now they're shutting down the community. They blocked us out, so I don't even want to deal with it anymore. It's just a headache. Um, sorry, sorry, Samsung. Until you bring back my unlock bootloader, I am not gonna root my phones anymore on your phone. It sucks. And plus, you you lose Samsung Pay. They just made their system completely evil now. You know, another reason to use phones like OnePlus, support phones like OnePlus, or the Pixel, the original Google. Anyway, have a great day, and as always, stay hot.